In this video, we're going to look at recording and running a macro. A macro is a very useful tool to enable you to do repeated tasks over and over again. It's like a programming language, but you will be pleased to know that we don't get involved with the programming. So a macro really is just a, um, a simple way of repeating a task over and over again. Before we actually record a macro, I want to have a little word about macro security. If I go to the tools menu and drop down to the macro option and then security, you'll see there are a number of settings. If on your computer you can't create macros or can't run macros once they've been created, it's probably because of these settings. Now the choice is yours. The default is high, which means that only trusted macros can run. I usually suggest to people medium and what happens when you want to run a macro then the computer will ask you if it's okay to run it. I'm fairly safe in that I know what I'm doing, so I leave mine on low, so I don't get all those uh, little warning signs coming up. I don't suggest you use low, but just be aware if your macros aren't working, it's because of one of these settings. So let's have a look at what a macro can do for us. Say, for example, we've selected a word and want to make it bold, italic and underlined. And then we would select another word and want to make it bold, italic and underlined and then another word, and so on. That can get rather tedious. Now, I know there are better ways to do that. I know we can use styles, but for the purpose of this, to make a nice, easy demonstration, I'm going to use a macro. So we need to record the macro, and for that we use a tools menu, drop down to macro, and then record a new macro. So the first window that comes up in the record macro dialog box asks for a name. Always give a very sensible name. So I'm going to put this make bold italic and underlined. Like everything else in Word, there are limitations of, as to what you can call things. So if it brings up an error, just choose a different name. The assign macro to toolbars and keyboard I'm going to come back to in a later video lesson. The next part is very important. Where do we want to store the macro? The default is in the normal template. And that means on your computer, every time you open Word, the macro will be available. But it doesn't link it to this specific document that you are working on. Far more normal is to change this setting to the document that you are particularly working on. It's a choice. If you are doing a test, choose this document. If you are working on something from home and you know you want to use the macro in lots of documents, choose the normal dot. So I'm going to choose this document. The next box is the description. It already fills in some details for you. You can type anything into that box. I'm quite happy with what that says. And we click on OK. What we get then is the toolbar for macros. The toolbar is not always immediately visible. It's very small ones. Have a good look around of where that can be. Although the recording has started, nothing is happening because it only records mouse clicks. The two options we've got are to stop the recording and to pause the recording. Now, as I just said, it only records mouse clicks. So if you want to select any text, you have to pause the recording, select the text that you want to work with, and then re resume the recording. Now, when you run the macro, you don't have to do that. That is automatically from the text that you select to apply the formatting to. So I'm going to resume the recorder. So we're recording the macro again, and notice my cursor has changed. It's got a little old-fashioned cassette tape on there to signify that it is recording. You then just go through the sequence of operations that you would do normally. So I'm going to make this bold, italic, and underlined. And you can see it's applied that to the text. 
I'm quite happy with that now. I'm going to stop the recording. So now I've recorded my macro, how about using it? Well, I'm going to select a word and then do tools, macro, macros this time to bring up the dialog box that contains all the macros available to me. I select the list of from the list of macros the one I want to use and then I run the macro. And you can see there the text has been changed to bold, italic and underlined. So to use the macro, select your text. And it doesn't have to be a single word. Tools, macro, macros. Choose the macro from the list and then run the macro. And it applies that formatting to your document. We will look at a more streamlined way of running a macro in the next video. And that will be assigning the macro to a toolbar um, or a keyboard shortcut. But I just want to go through that process again using a different um, macro that I want to create. I want to create a macro to change my page setup. So I'm going to do Tools, Macro, Record a Macro. Give my macro a name, and I'll just call it Orientation. Change it to the document that we want to work with. Add any description. Click on OK. We're now recording, as you can see from the mouse cursor. Go through the process you would normally use. File, Page Setup, and I'm going to make this macro change my orientation to Landscape, and then OK. Stop the macro from running. Now, if I just go to Print Preview, you'll see the document is Landscape. I'm going to change it back again, manually. There's Back to Portrait. Just to be able to show you the effect, we'll run the macro again. Tools, macro, macro, because we want to run the macro. There's my list of macros. Choose the one that you want to work with and run it. And then it's changed the document to landscape. Finally, in this section, tools, macro, macros again. If you've made changes, so if you need to make changes to your macro, you can just delete it and then create a new one, or you can edit the macro. Now this is not for the faint-hearted, but I will just show you it. And that brings up the um, macro visual basic tool. And there's the macros that we've created. There's the one that changes things to underline and further down this is our page setup one if we want to make changes for example if i decided that i actually wanted to change the left margin in this macro as well i can actually go in there and edit that and then close the visual basic down and that will be saved in the macro so if i run the macro again now I say it's also changed the left margin. You won't need to be involved with that, but it's worth knowing about. If you make changes, edit it. So that is creating and running a macro.